Russia continues to pound key Ukrainian cities days after announcing de-escalation from the capital city, Kyiv. In visuals released by the Russian Ministry of Defense, the extent of war wrought and destruction is captured, rained by heavy Russian missiles. Take a look at this report. Identify, track, demolish. Two days after announcing de-escalation and claiming to have withdrawn troops from the capital city of Kyiv, Russia continues its onslaught. The four videos released by the Russian Ministry of Defense reveal the ferocity of the assault on Ukrainian forces. Video 1 shows the destroyed battery of Ukraine's S-300 anti-aircraft missile system. The entire site has been reduced to rubble. No signs of human life. Only war machines destroyed by Moscow. S-300 is a long-range surface-to-air missile system. It was said to be a game-changer in Ukraine. But the footage paints a different picture. Video 2 reveals the Russian air power and its air superiority over Ukraine. Footage shows the crew of the Panzer anti-aircraft missile and cannon complex. Video shows Russia promptly detecting and destroying a Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicle. Debris of the unmanned drone is then seized by the Russian forces. The third video shows a special military operation conducted by the Russian armed forces. Moscow is repeatedly striking the military infrastructure and equipment of Ukraine. Video 4, released by Kremlin, shows KA-52 helicopters of the Russian Aerospace Forces destroying fortified strongholds and firing positions of armoured vehicles of Ukraine. After six rounds of talks, there was hope that Russia would de-escalate. But Moscow continues to rain missiles on key Ukrainian cities. Bureau Report, India Today. My colleagues Gaurav Savant and Rajesh Pawar are now joining me live from Ukraine, from the battlefield itself. Rajesh, uh, Rajesh, I'll come across to you first. Earlier when we were talking about the subject of chemical weapons, we know that the White House has in fact put out a statement and said that they're trying to equip the Ukrainians as well with supplies in case Russia deploys chemical weapons. Russia has been making the same accusation against Ukraine that Ukraine could possibly use chemical weapons without any sort of evidence being provided for the same neither side has provided any evidence how imminent or real is this threat look uh, this is not confirmed as yet you know certain sections of media have been reporting this since last night that america has confirmed supply of chemical weapons to ukraine now another section of media is saying it is not chemical weapons it is the equipment to protect people and soldiers from chemical weapons so this needs to be clarified first but if it is chemical weapons which America has supplied to Ukraine, then it is a very serious issue because supply of chemical weapons, production and export import of chemical weapons is banned under international law. You cannot do it. And if it has been done and if you club it together with the fact that Russians have suddenly left the entire area in the north of Kyiv, they are nowhere to be seen here. If you put these two things together along with the false flag operation which Russia is claiming that Ukrainian helicopters have come inside and destroyed an oil depot in Belogorod. This is highly unlikely seeing that high-tech anti-air anti defense system Russia has. 
So if you put all these factors together, it implies towards something very serious coming up in the coming days of the war. And maybe Russia is planning some serious offensive, maybe through air, maybe through some weapons, maybe chemical weapons over Kiev or Charni Hive. It appears to be like that. Over to you. Right. Gaurav, I'll take that question with you as well. Do you see the direction of this invasion, this Russian invasion of Ukraine changing in some manner? Is Russia planning something big, quote unquote, in the coming days of this war? The Russian operations are intensifying, but they're intensifying towards the east and the south. Um, it's it's almost as if they've abandoned their siege of Kiev, and the it's rather unfortunate or sad, or to look at it from the uh, from the Russian perspective, that the Russians had shed a lot of blood, uh, sweat, and destroyed a lot of their own weapon systems in in laying a siege around in Kyiv, uh, whether it's at Irpin or Bucha or Brori. And uh, today, the India Today team, we've travelled extensively uh, across some of these regions. And kilometre after kilometre, what you see is abandoned Russian weapons uh, and uh, some of their tanks are now in control of the Ukrainian forces. And they've just left. They've just left. Now, what's being said um, uh, by analysts is that they've left. They've gone to Belarus and they now intend to strengthen their positions in the east uh, where... The, a bigger offensive is planned towards the Donbass region. So while Kyiv heaves a sigh of relief, areas to the centre and the north heave a sigh of relief. The tension will only increase towards the west, uh, towards the east and the south, uh, where there is an, an uh, apprehension of intensified operations in the Donbass region. But from what we've been given to believe, the Ukrainian forces, the kind of weapons and systems they've got access to now. Um, disruptive technology. Remember, they had access to the Barakter uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Now they're also getting the switch blades, uh, and and these uh, kamikaze drones have a very crucial role um, in in actually destroying the enemy armor or uh, their infantry assault or their armored columns um, as they move forward, their convoys as they move forward. And the fact that they're getting the Star Streak surface-to-air missiles, which apparently have already been used in the Luhansk region. Uh, that's the information uh, the, that, that's coming out here. Now, that would indicate that the Ukrainian forces are well-armed and well-poised for a counter-offensive, something uh, that we hadn't heard of to, to a large extent earlier. Earlier, we were told that the Ukrainians are fighting a defensive war. Now they say, since they've controlled this area, they are fighting an offensive war to push the Russians uh, back in the east. That's exactly what President Zelensky also said, that NATO should see us, as in Ukraine, as something that's strengthening NATO and striking back and not somebody who requires assistance. Right. Rajesh, uh... Are the Ukrainians on the offensive? Have they shifted from the defensive to the offensive? Because, for instance, the attack on the oil depot in Belgorod, Russians are claiming that the Ukrainians have done it. When that same question was, in fact, asked of President Zelensky, he refused to comment and he said, I cannot tell you about the orders that I give as Commander-in-Chief. It looks highly unlikely that two helicopters could penetrate Russian airspace, go inside 20 kilometers, and destroy all depot. It looks unlikely, but not impossible. On the on the second hand, you see there is something called in army drawing out the forces. Kyiv was heavily fortified by Ukrainian army. There was a large number of soldiers and equipment inside the Kyiv city and around Kyiv city. Now Russians have vacated this area, and it is expected what Gorov said that they probably will move towards east and south of Ukraine to take care, to control of those areas. Now what will happen is. Ukrainian army will go to counter them and in the process they will leave Kyiv city and when they leave Kyiv city they will be in the open and this is called drawing out the enemy and this is what probably Russia is also planning and when they leave the city and come in the open they might be destroyed and this could be a very well a Russian strategy. Over to you. Right. My colleague Gita Mohan is also uh, joining me. Gita has been, of course, uh, moving around uh, the region. She's been to Mariupol. She's been to the Donbass region. She is in Donetsk right now. Gita, Gaurav and Rajesh were pointing to the fact that the Russian offensive seems to be, or the military operation seems to be moving towards the eastern and the southern part of uh, Ukraine. What can you tell us in terms of why is this operation shifting gears, if it is at all, and why so? 
Well, uh, absolutely right on the assessment. Uh, we've been seeing Rajesh's reports where he has been in the past also speaking of how the entire force is moving eastwards. And the announcement came from none other than Moscow Polymy, where uh, the focus is going to be Donbass, because it was never uh, Moscow's intention to annex Ukraine, is what Russia says. They say that this, uh, this entire operation was because of, uh, according to them, what was happening in Donbass, but also we know that it was also because of the move uh, by the Kiev administration towards NATO, towards the West. Donbass is an area that will remain a buffer because it is uh, primarily, predominantly uh, pro-Russia. We see Russian flags with the DPR. DPR is Donetsk People's Republic, the republic announced by and recognized by Russia as an independent republic. We see DPR flags and Russian flags with DPR flags everywhere. Uh, and now, as and when we're looking at uh, at, uh, at uh, Russian, uh, Russians taking over uh, areas such as Mariupol, you'd see the flags coming down and Russian flags and DPR flags coming up because they do consider Mariupol a part of Donetsk. Donbass region uh, is made of Donetsk and Luhansk and Mariupol is considered a part of Donetsk. So again, a very important and key strategic uh, po position for, uh, for Russia because it is a land bridge between Crimea and Donetsk. So uh, the entire focus now is going to be in the Donbass Donbass area to secure Donbass permanently and in a way and manner in which Ukraine cannot really reclaim territory in this area. So they are focusing their energies here and Kyiv, uh, if Kyiv administration is looking to west or continues to remain western, uh, with, uh, continues to be uh, with, with a western tilt, then at least this area will be a buffer zone between Russia and the pro-west uh, Ukraine or for that matter NATO member states. Right. Gaurav, coming across uh, to you right now, speaking of the financial cost of this uh, Russian invasion on Russia itself, in terms of the cost that Russia is bearing, it's 38 days right now, given the sanctions that have been imposed, how long, I mean, this, this is um, sort of a hypothetical question, in terms of sustaining this war, how long can Russia keep going, especially because now you're seeing that Ukraine is getting its supplies, its equipment uh, consistently from a NATO nation, so Ukraine seems quite geared up to keep it going for the long haul. Russia, how much so? So Ukraine is bleeding and so is Russia. There is no denying the fact and the impact is being felt across the world. Um, the Ukraine's economy has, uh, has taken a big hit, as has Russia's economy. But Russia is also working on alternate systems. Russia is in talks with China for the... RNB or yuan ruble trade. Russia is moving forward with India seeking the rupee ruble trade. And this is where the West is extremely concerned. Also, the West's reliance, especially Europe's reliance on Russian energy uh, is tremendous. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar did point that out that in the past month alone, there has been a 15% hike in uh, Europe taking more uh, oil and gas uh, from Russia. So those funds continue to pour in. Uh, and that is why several Western analysts are saying, unless you completely cut off energy, and which is not possible as far as Europe is concerned, uh, because even countries like Germany will, will be in tailspin, their economy will be in tailspin should this actually happen. Uh, several other European countries have said it's not possible. Even though America may pump in more, uh, uh, they, they cannot replace Russia and that gives Russia the advantage. Russia has also been, uh, you know, as we've reported in the past, whether there were sanctions after Georgia 2008 or sanctions after Crimea 2014, Russia has been working on a system where it is trying to work around sanctions. It's found alternatives uh, in some cases. It's seeking more alternatives. Uh, and this is a sword that actually cuts both ways. Uh, you know, American influence and America is concerned about this. Um, American influence may reduce in case the rupee ruble or rupee RNB trade, uh, uh, RNB uh, ruble trade increases. So those are systems that, that uh, Russia is also looking at. They will suffer. They will suffer in the long run. But their hope is once they achieve their aim, there will be a quick reversal of some sanctions and they will be able to achieve their aim, whether it's restricted just to Donbass region um, and getting that land bridge uh, uh, through Mariupol to Crimea, getting that water supply to Crimea or whether there's a bigger aim that President Putin wants to push in for. Right, Gita, coming across to you right now because you're in Donetsk and you've been moving around the Donbass region itself. Uh, in terms of Russia, obviously, now shifting its focus to, uh, to the Donbass region, uh, to what extent has Russia been 
successful in bringing Ukraine down to its knees in the region and in terms of what you've seen around Gita? Well, uh, a very uh, interesting uh, uh, lay of the land over here, Paul. I mean, this is a pro-Russia, Donetsk and Luhansk area. There are other areas that now uh, Russia is pushing to get within the Donbass region, the ones that were not a part of, uh, uh, of, of the Donetsk region, but were, were considered, which includes Mariupol. But the fact is that over here, uh, they want Russian help to become independent, to be liberated, so to say. And they have been in many ways than one. Uh, Russians over here say that they were Russian speaking of Russian origin. And that's why Western Ukraine, that's Kyiv, did not pay attention to this region or did not treat them equally. So there are problems within, but this is an internal problem uh, between Donbass and Ukraine. And nobody's justifying an invasion into a third country beyond Donbass. Was, uh, uh, many, in, even in Moscow, were shocked to see that uh, Putin decided to go beyond Donbass. But the decision has been taken because, uh, like Moscow says, if there's an existential threat, they are going to take uh, steps. And this certainly was a step that Putin thought uh, would bode well for his country. For now, we're looking at, like uh, Gaurav said, de-dollarization of the uh, gas and uh, oil market, which is going to be huge because it's not just Russia. Russia has China support. China is also going to deal in yuan. So yuan ruble, rupee ruble. Uh, the these are, these are kind of exchanges that are going to be uh, tremendous and will have tremendous impact in Donetsk. Right now, everywhere, all through the day, Paul Lamy, we hear explosions, blasts, sounds of shelling. In certain areas, you can hear gunfire, which means there's gun battle, man-to-man -man combat that is underway around Donetsk itself. So a lot of areas that are affected. Also, the most important point. Ukraine say, says, and we're not justifying anything over here. India today is not here to take sides. But the fact of the matter is that I travel to, uh, 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 to, to, to the bordering towns. And uh, Ukraine has been saying that civilians are, have been attacked, impacted, killed by the Russian forces. You move around in the Donbass region. Uh, where the Ukrainian forces are on the other side, they have been shelling and uh, uh, mortar shelling and uh, uh, bombing areas that are now under the control of Donetsk. And they're all neighborhoods. They're all civilian population, uh, populated neighborhoods, uh, absolutely destroyed. And we've brought that report from uh, from one part. We've brought, the, in fact, we brought it from two parts, uh, uh, Marinka and, uh, uh, and Gorlovka. So two parts where we've actually seen the kind of damage that ha that uh, these, this part of, uh, of of Ukraine, so to say, has suffered, which is the Donbas region. Now, Gaurav and Rajesh, thank you so much for bringing us uh, all of those perspectives uh, in terms of what it actually is happening on the ground on day 38 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine.